The Ohio State Buckeyes last year did not win the Big Ten, let alone win the division of the Big Ten East, but they made the Rose Bowl and they beat Utah. That's a good accomplishment for a pretty young Ohio State team, but there's no excuses this year. This is the year where C.J. Stroud and company want to ball out, have to ball out, have to go out there and give it everything they got. And they had a heck of a spring game this past Saturday. Let's take a look at the 2022 Ohio State Buckeyes with Coach Ryan Day. Let's go. I say with Coach Ryan Day, I'm not actually getting him on. I'm not that good. What's going on, everybody? Christian Ballard with Ballard Sports Media. Hey, do me a favor. Hit that thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button if you're new to the channel. I do college football, baseball, basketball. Uh, really focus on those three sports. Um, I focus on golf when it's time for the Masters, uh, and I did congratulate um, the winner. So, anyway... <laughs> <laughs> um, Scotty Scheffler, congratulations. But here today, going through, based on conference with the 2022 College Football Previews, looking at the Buckeyes today, we looked at Penn State last week, and I think I picked them 10-2, and two, um, although – I'm still very high on them. I'm high on six-year quarterback, Sean Clifford. Um, but we'll get to that in a second. Um, but let's go ahead and look at Ohio State and what they got coming in and everything they're doing. So Ohio State 2021, uh, they had a pretty good year, actually. I don't know if they overachieved or underachieved. That's the thing. They lost to Oregon. They lost to Michigan 10 and 2, 11 and 2 overall. They beat Utah in the Rose Bowl, which was a heck of a game. Uh, I remember going live for it on New Year's Day for you guys. Beat Minnesota makes plenty of sense. You lose a close one to Oregon. You beat teams like Tulsa, Akron, uh, Rutgers, Maryland. You get a bye week, which I thought was good timing considering the stretch. You beat the Nittany Lions, uh, which you played a, a pretty Interesting game. I think that's nine points there, 33-24, uh, 26-17 over Nebraska. They had definitely, and, and no doubt, one of the best offenses um, in college football. Garrett Wilson, Chris Olave, who are going pro, um, who are going to be great. Jackson Smith and the Jigba uh, comes back, and Marvin Harrison – uh, comes back this year, right? And those are the guys that are going to lead this Buckeye offense with C.J. Stroud at the realm of quarterback. So when you look at it, and I did on the Professional Sports Show on Sunday night give my thoughts on the, um, of course, the the games, the, the spring games that is, or I guess Saturday night after the spring games, but – um, and I clipped it. Go back and watch my, my thoughts on the Ohio State spring game. I thought it was incredible what they did. I am very high on C.J. Stroud. I think we're back to him and Bryce Young being the Heisman favorites. I really do. I think that both of those guys got a chance to go win it. But what really stood out to me was the defensive side of the ball. Um, it – was better than, um, you know, it, it was better than it was last year. Um, JT Tui Malawau um, was a key recruit, one of the top guys, you know, on the defensive side of the ball. Um, and, look, this guy played great. And then you have Sawyer. Um, I can't find his first – Let's see. You had Jada McKenzie. You had Noah Potter. These guys, the front seven for the Buckeyes was insane. Now, some people are saying that's because the O-line has to develop some more. Some are saying that they're really that talented. I think they're really that talented. I also do think that the O-line's got to develop a little more, and they do have to protect C.J. Stroud this season. But, again, overall – 
they look pretty darn good. They got the receivers. They got the weapons. They got great running backs. I think they bring back Travion Henderson um, in the running back position uh, and, of course, C.J. Stroud at, at quarterback. So, um, But last year – uh, they had the best start, not the best finish. Well, actually, I would say it wasn't even that good. Of, it, it was an okay start. The Oregon loss, you played it close down to the wire. The way Oregon finished their season after that win makes it not look as good, but Oregon's still a good team, and we'll get to the Pac-12. That'll probably be the last conference we do. Uh, and We'll look at Bo Nix and then Dan Lanning from Georgia at Oregon. You lose that game. It's understandable. It's a Pac-12. It's a Big Ten matchup. I think that's where their defense struggled early on, was just giving up a touchdown or two and just giving up the points that they gave up. Um, I don't think the offense lost this game. I think it was clearly the defense. Uh, but you beat teams like Tulsa, Akron. You're going to beat Maryland and Rutgers. Let's just call it what it is, beating these teams. Uh, Penn State played it kind of close, I guess. I mean, they lost by only nine points to the Buckeyes. Uh, you beat uh, at least by nine Nebraska. You just struggled at times. Like, it was a roller coaster. But late in the season – you blow out teams like Michigan State. You blow out Purdue, uh, even though you still give up 31 points. Um, and, of course, we remember, what do you call it? The game with your next-door neighbors or whoever, or the team up north or whatever you call them uh, in Ann Arbor. Uh, Harbaugh finally won that game. Yeah, you get them at home this year, obviously. You win the Rose Bowl game by a field goal, 48-45. They played a lot of close games. I don't know how to say it other than they just didn't have the defense at times. Um, but they had, they always had the offense is what they had. But when it came time to face the higher tier offenses, like Kay McNamara and, and Michigan and Hassan Haskins, when it came time for that, was it enough that they were going to put those points up? I don't think so. But again, overall, um, eleven and two overall, beating Utah in the Rose Bowl, ten and two regular season, losing to Oregon and Michigan, two Power Five teams and two teams that I don't think you should be too much embarrassed by uh, uh, to lose to. Okay, that being said, you go eleven and two last year. Let's look at this year. Let's see what the Buckeyes do uh, in preview in 2022. Right. <clears throat> um, here we go. Pull this up here. Okay. Get off to an interesting start. Uh, the non-con is – and we'll get to that in a second. I got to take a look. Obviously, they had just had their spring game two days ago as I record this on Monday. Notre Dame at home, Arkansas State, Toledo – Wisconsin, Rutgers, at Michigan State, get a bye week, which I think is good timing because then you come into a bit of a stretch here. Um, you get Iowa and Kirk Ferentz, uh, the head coach, which I think they'll be much improved this year in ways, at Penn State, at Northwestern, Indiana, at Maryland, and then you play your brother at home with Michigan. So um, it's – you know, it, it's a pretty interesting schedule. Um, how do I put – so, okay, we say that teams have hard schedules, right? How? Do, let me know in the comments. How would you define that, though? Is it based on the team you're previewing and who, whose schedule you're talking about or just a stretch? Because, I mean, back-to-back -back road games at Penn State, at Northwestern to go play Pat Fitzgerald's uh, Wildcats um, – you know, that's that's going to be tough, you know, or is it? Is Ohio State – no one's unbeatable. It's not like that. Um, but, you know, it's still like how, – how do I put this? Be careful, right? Anyway, so I mentioned the schedule. Let's just break it down. Uh, the out-of-conference schedule, is it easy? Arkansas State and Toledo, yes. Notre Dame, not easy. Um, and that's pretty much it. 
overall, I think it's a pretty favorable out-of-conference schedule. It would be interesting to see what what Notre Dame has without Brian Kelly and uh, who is it? Is it Marcus Freeman comes in as the head coach over there? So it's just going to be something interesting to see and look at here. Um, full screen this for you guys. Um, overall, are there potential trap games on here? Which I didn't make a banner for, but yes, there are some. I can make a banner real quick. Um, and what I mean by trap game, obviously, um, is a game where you should win, but maybe you you could falter and lose it. Um, just to kind of be quick with this one, and maybe there's more. Because, I mean, it's probably every, every other game on their schedule. We don't know what Wisconsin's going to do. Um, Rutgers, I doubt it. Michigan State, I didn't put them on the list, but I'd, I'd be careful there. Penn State could be a trap game. I think they'll de definitely be favored in that game, as the Buckeyes will. Uh, Notre Dame uh, and Michigan. These are games against the higher-tier opponents that you have to face, uh, Ohio State. I'm going to go ahead and just say this. I think they should outright beat everybody on their schedule except for one team, and I'll get to that in a second. Yes, I have them going 11-1. and one. I like what they bring back. I like the teams that they have on the schedule, too. They're going to be very strong at wide receiver. I mean, you got top three guys, one or two that are probably going to be the best in football. Amike Ibuka. Marvin Harrison Jr., but Jackson Smith and Jigba comes back, right? I think, though, and a lot of people are expecting this, but could we see a 2020 national title game rematch with, um, with Alabama and Ohio State? I think it's 1A and 1B right out the gate with those two teams. 1A and 1B, and you're saying Alabama and Ohio State? Yes, and I think it comes down to quarterbacks, right? They're practically the same class, C.J. Stroud and, and Bryce Young is, I think. I think uh, both were sophomores last year. Uh, very talented, strong arm, good in the pocket. Both are very mobile, creative. Do they need to be in the right system? No. <laughs> I think that, I mean, every quarterback needs talent and right coaching, but – they're not like systematic where it was a one hit type of year. They're both going to be great and getting back and staying on topic with Ohio state real quick. Uh, CJ Stroud should be elite, dangerous and amazing. And I'll tell you this, if Bryce young does not win the Heisman for a second straight year, I guarantee you it's because CJ Stroud has stepped up his game at Ohio state and he took it from him. Right. Not saying robbed him, I'm saying he earns it. I really believe that. Three games that I see trap games on their schedule, Notre Dame, Penn State, and Michigan. I'm going to say – I'm just going to go ahead and, and get to the chase here. They're going to have the offense. I think their defense is better than what people expect it to be overall. I think the DBs are pretty good. Um, you got a four-year uh, – Junior defensive tackle who's redshirted a bit, Jaden McKenzie up front on the defensive line. His classmate and defensive edge rusher, Noah Potter, looked really, really good. Um, Jaden McKenzie, they kind of played him with the second team, but they also played him a lot with the first team defense. Um, he's going to be a guy to walk on, uh, or not walk on, but uh, watch out for. Uh, you got Xavier Johnson too. Um, it, it's so it's so interesting. They bring in some new coaches too. Justin Fry is the O line coach. Um, you know Tim Walton, Perry Eliano uh, with the coaching staff on defense. So you have new guys in the system. You don't really necessarily. I mean, you got some young players, but you do have some juniors and sophomores that have some good experience and even some seniors that come in for Ohio State um, and the Buckeyes to see what they can do. 
um, and lead the defense. I really do think that they take a step forward. And let me double check. What was the most they gave up of any team? They gave up in their losses 35 to Oregon, and they gave up 42 to Michigan. The most they gave up in any win, it looks like, was the Rose Bowl with Utah where they won 48-45. So against the better teams and the better offenses, they had a hard time just defending, uh, first off, really just the secondary, but especially up front, it was very young. And they played some good O-line to where they couldn't get off blocks, and they gave up a bunch of big uh, running yardage. I mean, Hassan Haskins ran all over them uh, in the the game of 2021. So, overall, um, where do I go from here? This is going to be a dangerous Ohio State team. It looks like the defense is much improved. I think they're still going to struggle a bit. You know, not going to be perfect or whatever, but – Overall, I'll say this. I think the cards and the odds are in the favor of Ohio State this year in 2022. I almost want to say 2021, but um, I think it's in their favor. And again, I'll say there's three games on the schedule, trap games. These are games where you shouldn't lose, but you could lose, right? Penn State, Notre Dame, and Michigan. Now, I'm not saying you shouldn't lose those because it'd be embarrassing. These are not embarrassing teams to lose to. I'm just saying that I think this is a team in Ohio State that should honestly run the table, go 12-0, and make the playoffs, probably in their undefeated, if not one loss. And I think that their one loss will be one of these three teams here, right? And I'm going to go ahead and predict this. I'm just going to go ahead and give it to you guys. I'm going to say they go 11 and 1, 8 and 1 in Big Ten play. And I will say their loss is going to be Penn State. Uh, I like Penn State this year. Sean Clifford comes back. Uh, they bring a lot in. Even if he's not working out too well as the quarterback for Penn State, um, you know, maybe you turn to the freshman Drew Aller. But here's what I'll say um, is that. Penn State and Ohio State is a big rivalry. I think they call it like the border war or something. I I, I just found out about its name. Um, but Penn State, they, they're recruiting greatly. They got for 2023, not yet he's going to be on, uh, you know, it, he, he won't be on the field this year, but Alex Birchmeyer is a five-star offensive tackle. But – you look at their recruiting class and even look at Ohio State um, and their recruiting uh, is incredible too. But Penn State brings in Drew Aller, a five-star quarterback to compete with Sean Clifford. I doubt he wins the starting job, but, you know, they're recruiting greatly. Katron Allen at running back. Nick Singleton's a five-star. Caden Saunders is a four-star receiver they're losing Jahan Dotson to the draft so maybe he can step up we'll see bring in some great offensive tackles uh Danny Dennis Sutton is a five-star defensive lineman Drew Shelton uh Makai Flowers Anthony Ivey Christian Driver to name some guys on defense and offense that you could possibly see on the field you can't tell me there's going to be a team that doesn't play a single recruit from this year I really think that you might see some of those names up here, but even still, um, you know, if not, that's okay. That's not a big deal because Penn State brings a lot in. Um, Penn State's recruited greatly over the years. They really have. It's been top 20, top 10. Um, you go back a few years, I mean, Curtis Jacobs on the linebacker core, Keandre Lambert uh, is a receiver. Joseph Johnson, uh, Micah Bowens. Um, overall, I just – I have a gut feeling. I know I'm kind of rambling on here trying to make a case for me picking Penn State. All I can say is that I think Penn State's going to have that kind of talent. They can compete with Ohio State. Um, it's going to be a home game at Happy Valley for the Lions. A big crowd. I know that it's been there, done that, but at some point, man – 
Like, you can't sit there and say that 2016 is going to be the first time in 20 years or something like that, man. They got to get back to it. They got to take Ohio State. I think Penn State could even win the East this year. It's a great possibility. I'm going to say Ohio State does that uh, because I did have Penn State 10 and 2, but one of their 10 wins will be over the Buckeyes. And I think that's their only loss. And I think that, you know, they run the table. Maybe they get a little cocky over a, a, a Iowa win or something. But, I mean, they could lose any of these games. They could run the table. It would not surprise me if Ohio State goes 12-0. and 0, But they could lose to Michigan again. They could lose to Penn State. They can lose in East Lansing. It's a great possibility. Who knows what uh, Coach Allen and the Hoosiers do. We'll just have to wait and see what happens. But, folks, I'm going to get out of here. I love you guys. Jesus loves you. He's got an amazing plan for your life. Never give up. Keep having hope, faith. Keep loving and serving others and all that good stuff, man. And do me a favor here on the channel. Like, comment, and subscribe right here to Ballard Sports Media for more sports content. And comment down below what you guys think Ohio State does this year. I got them 11-1 and one with only a loss to Penn State, but we'll see what happens. Love you guys. Jesus loves you. God bless. And as always, like I say, roll tide. Ballard Sports Media checking out. Y'all have a good one. We'll see you later. Peace. <music>